Welcome to Live Daf, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Hayyemi Meseches. Me'ila Daf Yud Aleph. We begin on Yud Aleph Beis, beginning of the new Perik, at the Mishnah, which is five lines from the bottom. Vlad Chatas. We have a carb Chatas, which had an offspring. The halacha is, we're going to back in Meseches tomorrow. There is a special halacha, Lemoish Messinai, that there are five variations of Karbanais Chatas, which cannot be offered on the Mizbeach. They're left to die. They're called Chamesh Chatois Hamesuis. And the Mifarash, the Rashi here, explains beautifully, he says, because Chatas can only work if it's the original, if it was Hufrash for this purpose, for this person to atone for this sin. But if it's a derivative of a chatas, it's a vlad chatas, or a tmura, an exchange. That's not the original. That's not a chatas that was set aside for the purpose. Avi machaper, on anechet, he says that by the vlad, by the tmura, he adds that it was generated by avera, because a tmura is something inappropriate. So that's the reason why Tamura's chatas cannot be used for kapara. You can't use for kapara something which was brought about so through an improper, inappropriate process. A chatas whose owner died, there too, he says, it's not relevant anymore. In kapara la mason. Why? Because their misa experience was already machapar and their affairs. Okay, so that explains the Mishnah. Vlad chatas, Tamura's chatas, the chatas shamesu bale. Whose owner died? Yomus, all these golemis. They have no function, no purpose. We have two more on the list of five. Veshe Brashnasa, Echatas, which is over the first year since birth, so it's over age, unsuitable. Vishav the or it went missing. Vinimsis and you discovered it as a balasma, blemished. So in these two cases, it depends. If the owner opted out, in Mishachipra Bailam. The owner had already had decided to use something else. Rashi says, so instead of figuring out a way to salvage these, the overage of the uh, blemished one by uh, selling it, by uh, you know using its money to buy it, he chose to use the other one, a proper animal, as his kapara. So. He, and in fact, he rejected these. So in addition to the fact that it's overage, he also rejected it. In addition to the fact that it's been lost and found as a ball, he rejected it. Even a shaky problem, Thomas. It's stamped as achata samis. Okay, in that case, it no longer has kedushas carbon. It has no carbon value to it. It's not going to be put on the mizbeach. It's not going to be redeemed for a carbon. Very nice a tmura. can't generate a tmura as per a standard carbon because here it doesn't have hakrova value. Right, Atesis explains. Given the Azal Ibud is going for destruction, slated for Ibud, lo yishaychabu mil, mil is not applicable, but lo yikarinabu kachi Hashem, and no longer has the status of kachi Hashem, it can't generate a, a tmura, and likewise, there's no mil. Although you're not meant to take uh, partake uh, in this. Uh, Animal, because it has Kedusha, has some element of Kedusha, but there's no Me'ilu Belay Me'ilu. Let's turn to the next topic. So, this is all if you opted to use the uh, the other one, ignore this one. But <coughs> suppose it's still pre Kapara, and the owner wants to salvage this uh, this animal. Is there a way to do it? Yep. So, in the case, of the balasmum, Rashi says, no need to wait, just sell it and use the money for a chatas. In the case of the overaged, you have to wait until it gets a blemish, right? Tirachit, you still have to send it out to the farm, so it gets a mum, the mocha have it sold, and use the money to buy a proper chatas. And that uh, is a proper chatas with full kadusha, voisa tamura, and that one can make it tamura, voisa tamura, melon, of course, there's meal on that. So the mission split the list into two parts. It began with three, Vlad, Tamura, and Mesa Baleo, stamped as Lamisa. 
no salvageable option. Then we have two more where there is a, salv a salvaging option. Why does the Mishnah split into two groups? Mishnah and Reshat, like a Miflaki. Why in the Reshat? There's no differentiation. There's no uh, survival option. Oh, Mishnah, save it like a Miflaki, when the Sefer, we have options. The answer is Reshat Psikale, Sefer Le Psikale. In the Reshat, there's no, uh, there's no other option. It's clear cut, Lamisa. In the Sefer, we have uh, options. Now, why repeat the same Mishnah here as we had back in Tamura? How Tanah Lika by Tamura? We learned the same Mishnah by Tamura. Answer. Tanah Mishnah Tamura. Tanah Hasel Mishnah Tamura. There it's discussed because of the Tamura element of the Mishnah. And on account of that, we bring the Mila component as well. And here it's exactly the opposite. Tanah Hasel Mishnah Mila. Here it's discussed because of the Mila, which is the subject of the Almasechta. On account of that, we throw in the, uh, we add the Tamura element as well. Next Mishnah. Mavash Moes, Lindsay Rusu. Person set aside money for his uh, Nazar fund to finance his carbonis. Three, three carbonis in total: Chatas, Oila, and Enshlam. Now, Chatas and Oila, Kachikadashim, where there is a Mila already from the year from the start, whereas Shlamim has no Mila until later in the process. What is the status of this money, which is meant to purchase all three? The Chantas Noila, which has Mila, and the Shlom, which doesn't. Once again, it has a sort of in limbo status. There's no Mila. You can't have enough, but there's no Mila. Why? Because a portion of this fund is earmarked for a Shlomim, which carries no Mila. And technically, every single coin in this fund can be used for Shlomim. So you can't really identify a me'ila enabled coin. Each one can say, well, it's not me, it's the other one. Each one of these can be used to buy a shlame. Now the uh, Lecha mission says, but if you have enough in the entire fund, then certainly you've committed me'ila, because inevitably there is khatas money in there. Some disagree. Mace, the fellow had a nazar fund, and he passed away. Once again, he had undesignated Unlabeled monies. Rashi says, it's Allah Mesh Messinai, the uh, unused uh, Nazar money goes on the to the public oil fund. What about Moisma for Russia? The money had been designated, been labeled. This is for my khatas, this is for my. So after his passing, what happens? Dve khatas, the khatas money, Yelhu, Liyamamel, the Dead Sea, for destruction. Loinen, there's no me'ila, because it doesn't have. Carbon value anymore, but there's no hana in the rabbanon. To make oila, sure, you have view oila. The, uh, people bring an oila with it. You can bring an oila for a person who passed away. It should be a schus for him. Umayal ben, there's meal on that money because it's full fledged, full blown uh, carbon material. To make shlamim, likewise, you have your shlamim. It could be used for a shlamim even if there's passing. So only the chantas is linked to the owner. If there's no owner, there's no uh, bringing the chantas as we had in the Mishnah, right? Chantas amesa, right? But oil of Shlamim, you can bring from his money even after his passing. Yabi Shlamim. And to a certain extent, it has a unique status of a Shalmi Nazar, a Shlam of a Nazar. And therefore, when a Chalmi Amechad has a shorter time span, it's been within a day, in contrast to a standard Shlam which has two days, because this is a Shlamim of a Nazar. Ve'ein tunin lechem. But still, you don't bring along breads like a regular Nazar, because that needs the actual owner, the actual Nazar here, which you don't have. Maska flourish Lokish. So you reverse back to that point where you had this collective fund, unlabeled, undesignated, unspecified. Each coin can technically serve as uh, the financer for the shlomim, so there's no meal on the entire pot. Why doesn't the Mishnah cite another example of such a case? Carbon fund with no meal. Listen, now we should also add a case, Hamafish Mois Lekinim. He had a fund to buy birds for a carbon. There too, loinen and loin There should be no meal. You know why? Technically, he can buy birds that are uh, underage. 
as we'll see in the next Mishnah, Torah, a certain type of bird, has to be a certain point of maturity to be kasha for a carbon. And B'nai is just the opposite. They're meant to be young and overaged. They're unsuitable. The Parshim say that the main um, crux of his argument was the first part. That technically a person could buy Tyran, still underage, and uh, wait for them to grow into the, uh, you know, into their proper age. And if that's the case, since in their current state they're not royal for carbon, there's no meila as of yet. So the money used to purchase those birds, or theoretically that can be used to purchase those underage birds, should not have the meal component attached to them. Because if he were to carry out his intention and buy these birds, there would be no meila. Similar to the money that can be used to buy a shlum, there's no meal. Amarava, since when he meant to buy underage birds, that's not its intended purpose. Amra Torah, b'mayistum and have shlamim. In contrast to the Nazar, with the unspecified money, Torah instructs him to buy a shlamim with, that's its proper destiny. And since shlamim has no meal, the money doesn't either. But since when does the Torah tell you to buy underage birds? True, if you would do it, you have a point, but who says he's supposed? It's not intended for that purpose. Amra Torah, hobby question mark, hobby Torah, shaligi as mana? Shainan, ruin should not fit limits beya? Meant to buy proper birds, which have meal, and that's why the money as well has meal. Continue his mission. Shimon Aimer, Hadam, the blood of a carbon, Kal Betchila, so initially it's lenient. We'll see in a minute what this means. The Chawar Besaifa, but eventually it becomes more strict. Which is the exact opposite of the Sachan. The wines, they pour in the Mizbeach. Initially, it has Mila. But ultimately, it's more lenient. Explains the mission. Dam, the blood of a car, Initially, there's no Mila on Dam. Surprise. <laughs> Even though Dam is the essence of the Hakrava, it's the life force of the animal, that's the representation of the entire car. There's no Mila, as we're going to see in the Gemara based on Psuk. Yot Lenachal Kidron, however, once it flows out to the Kidron Valley, before the farmers can take it as fertilizer, Chacham say, wait, pay, pay up. Mayalmboy, otherwise there's Milo in the Rabbanon. So it sort of goes up a notch, and Milo is applied. In the Sacham, just the opposite. Initially, before you pour it, it has Milo. It's meant for the Mizbech, it's Kachi Hashem. But Yod Lushisim, once it descends down into the subterranean cavity, into the drain below the Mizbech, it's done. Nazas Metzvah say, Ain Mayalmboy, there's no Milo. So regarding blood, although there's no meal in our and Rabban, there's meal applied. There's no meal in the Rabban. My time is done in my own. In Farshim, modify the Lashon of the Gemara. To mean as follows. What well, the Gemara means to ask. The question is with the Rabban, is there meal on blood? But in our Torah? All seem to agree there's no meal. Why? My time, my dumb, my Why do we say there's no meal in a Torah? Wouldn't you think that dam is the most critical element of a carbon? Of course, there's meal. The pasuk says, "I gave you." The blood for the purpose of akrova. It's yours. It's yours for akrova. It's yours, meaning there's no meal. Although it's for kapara, there's no meal. There be small tana, a different source. Lachaper, it's meant for kapar. The kapar nasate, I designated for atonement. For me, not for me. Rabbi Yechon Omar, Omar Kol. The pasuk says, "Adam who benefits lachaper? Who means it stays consistently the same status? Well, for ne kapar, kolah kapar. Who? So just like after atonement, there's no question that there's no me. Likewise, even before atonement, before its process, there's no me. Ma lacha kapara in bamila, just like no mila after kapara, that seems to be a given. And soon the more will question that. Af of kapara in bamila, there's no mila before kapara either. Ema, perhaps, go the other way around. Assume that mila does apply before kapara, and it stays consistently in that, on that track, and mila applies even lacha kapara. So maybe just the opposite. Ema, maybe we could say. Like before Kabar, there is Mila, let's assume so. Af, Lacha Kabar, Ishma Mila. You can't say that. You can't suggest that there will be Mila even after Kabar, after the fact. 
you find a precedent to something which whose mitzvah has already been completed and fulfilled and this should be me'ilah applied so you can't suggest that am I like why not I'll give you a, I'll find you an example we turn to the place how do we turn classic right turn the ashes shoveled off the mitzvah and placed on the floor alongside the mitzvah which gets absorbed into the ground and we went from a pasik the samoy eats the mitzvah the samoy leave it here don't touch it. It's it's don't don't uh, it's, it's meila. Haritumar sadeshin, which has meila, even though shenasas mitzvah soy, its mitzvah has been fully done, and still be by meila. So maybe by the dam as well. No, but how will haritumar sadeshin be verse mishtaleach? The answer is because we have two exceptions to the rule. One that you mentioned also, the parts the animal of the sar mishtaleach, which are thrown down, which is thrown down the cliff on Yom Kippur, where it's also aser b'hano despite being Nasus Mitzvah. And we know that when we find two examples, two exceptions, Shneik, Suv, and Abon, Kiach, two Pesukim that coincide on the same halacha. Basically a repetition to tell you, limit it to these two, otherwise it would just say it once and apply it elsewhere. It's meant to limit it to those. Only those have this uniqueness. Bechol, Shneik, Suv, and Kiach, we have these two Pesukim that point out something unusual, Eim, Elam, you can't apply it elsewhere. So true, you found two exceptions, but only those. That's true when you find two exceptions. You're assuming that the Yisrael Mishalech remains us even after the fact. So you have two. If you're going to come to the opinion that you could benefit from the Yisrael Mishalech after the fact, now you're only left with one exception, to Mishalech. Michael Ehrman, so back to the question. Apply that concept to them as well. Oh, there's another exception for a total of two. That's one. Ubiti Kehuna. We got another kind. We got the warning of Kipper, which is a one-time use. It's off limits going forward. It's aser b'hano, despite being nasas mitzvah. So now you have two. You have shneik suvin ben keachod. You have chol shneik suvin ben keachod. You can't learn from there. Holy chol rabban. That's going to contra rabban. The Amri say, hands off. The bide kuhuna. We leave them there. Hide them. Put them away. Malamed, we learn Shein Tun and Gris, you have to put them away sharper. So now you have two exceptions. Two examples of Nasus Mitzvah, which are also. Shuma Sadash and Bidikun. Ella Allah Rabbi Dais, we're going to him, the Amor says, Mutal Shamash Ben, Kain Hedyet. But there just means that a Kain Gullah can't re wear it, but a Kain Hedyet. So next year, you know, you can't wear it again for Yom Kippur. But. It's usable. So that's uh, off the list. Michael Amemus, now only back to one. The answer is we still have two. Mishnahava, Trumas Adashin, that's one. Begla Rufa, here's another one. The calf after the Arufa. It's Lo Asr Bahano. It's not Yav Shnik, so we don't care. Okay, so to Gemara, fine. But you're working with the assumption that if you have two Psukim, it's meant to be limited. Hanicha, that's good and well. The Mandama according to the opinion that says, Eimelam, you can't learn if you have two exceptions. Elo le Mandama, Malam according to the opinion that disagrees with that formula. You could learn even from two exceptions. Michael Ehrman, now we're back to the question. Apply that concept to Dam as well. That even after Zrika, there should be Yasser Hano. So as the Gemara, that's in general. But here we have Miutim in the Pasuk. Limiting indicators in the Pasuk to tell you. Leave it to these two. Three miyutik, see we have two miyutik, see what's my rufa, the group says ha rufa, the extra hey ha rufa. Only this one, because what's my we find by the Turma Sadashan as well, Samai, place it, him, the ashes, eight summons be honey, and only these two are given this unique status that there's an element of Kedusha that which outlasts the mitzvah. We dech in the but it doesn't apply elsewhere. Hence, we know that blood after Kapara is certainly Mila free, and the word who says, its status is consistent throughout. And just like post Hakrova, there's no Mila, likewise pre Hakrova. What about the Nasachim? But initially there was Mila. It's Kachi Hashem. But then Mila expires after pouring. Apparently it's not going like that, Shita. 
Who maintains Mila even after the pouring? The Sanya. He says, a little cut. In fact, it was this little opening, this little passageway. Western side of the Kevish, which was used to access the uh, underground cavities where the wine would accumulate and harden. They would take it out and burn it. It's the last Kedusha. Achas, the Shibim Shana, once in seven years, once a lifetime. Pirachai Kihun, Yarden Boy, the young Kahana would climb down and they would bring up Umabian, Yain, Korish, it's congealed. Globs of congealed white shoe, the Gulag Dale, which appeared like these round, circular shaped um, figure or cakes. The Seifern, the Seifern, Oyse, the Kedusha, they would burn it with Kedusha, the Makam Kodesh, like any Kachem, which is possible, like any Shanam of a Kodesh, Has, Hasech, Nasach, Shechel Hashem. You want to pour the wine. And from the word by Kodesh, we learn Kashem, Shen, Sucha, Kedusha. Just like you pour it in a Kedusha manner on the, you know, Beis HaMikdash and the Mizbech, likewise. The, um, just like that's done in Makam Kaddish, likewise the Yisraif has done in Makam Kaddish. So clearly he's regarding them as materials that have Kedusha. And presumably it has Mila as well, unlike our Mishnah, which says that once it's poured, Mila expires. Okay, before we get back to this question and try to resolve it, but we, we just quoted it a Pasuk to teach us that you have to burn it in the base of Midrash. What, what do you see it in the Pasuk? Pasuk is about pouring. My Mashman, what do you see this burning requirement in the Pasuk? of Amar of in Asa Kodesh Kodesh, we have a Gzera Shabba, using the word Kodesh. Ksiv Hacha, Ba Kodesh, here it says Ba Kodesh, Ksiv Hasan, by the Noiser, which you burn, in a Makim Kaddish, so we have Kaddish here as well. We connect it to Manoisa, Shreifas, Bikdusha, Avainami, you burn it, Shreifas, Bikdusha. Fine. So we make a link between us and Noisa, you have to burn it, Bikdusha. Now, our Mishnah, which seems to say that there's no Kaddusha once it's poured, it's not like going like the Shita. It is. I feel the same really good Our Mishnah can be going like this sheet. So why is it no Mila in our Mishnah? The Kolat, we're speaking that he intercepted it midair before it landed on the floor of the underground cavity. Rashi says the Gedusha only gets applied when it lands on the bottom, lands into this uh, you know, area, then it gets this uh, new status that is considered poured wine, which is slated for Sreifa, Ba'esh, Makam Kaddish. But if you catch it midair, no, it, it doesn't yet have that status and it doesn't have meal because, look, the old meal is gone because you've poured it, you've expended it, and this new status hasn't really arrived yet because it hasn't landed on the bottom. There's another version which goes the other way. Perhaps Al Mishnah can be consistent with this shita, that there's meal once it lands on the bottom because Al Mishnah is totally caught in the middle, midair. That's why there's no meal. Amri, the answer was given live. No, we don't have to tweak the Mishnah accordingly. It landed on the bottom, and still the Mishnah says there's no Mila, and still can be found with Rezabat Sadiq, who says a Srefa is required. Because this Srefa process is only with Rabbanon. They give it a similar status to other uh, unsuitable carbon materials. You burn it, fine. It's not required in Atari, and there's no Mila either. What do you mean? Why does it say the quarter of Pasik? Asmach, that's just a, a, a hint. For the Din de Rabbanan, but in Atari, there's no Din Shreifa, and there's no Din Mila, as per our mission. Okay, so let's summarize. Dam has no Mila in Atari from one of three sources either uh, Asatib Lachem, or Lachapar and Asatib, or who? Has the same status throughout, just like there's no meila post kapara, because that concept of having iser even beyond the fulfillment of the mitzvah is limited to just this very specific cases, but not by the adam. And likewise, before kapara, there's no meila as well. The sachem, just the opposite. There's meila beforehand, but not after you pour it. 
initially we said it's not going to work like Rosh Hashanah who says that it's last Kedusha status the fact that you have to burn it later on we have two uh, responses either Amish is speaking that he caught a mid-air so never achieved that new status or Amish is talking about Torah Rosh Hashanah is talking about Rabbanon so that justifies the lack of meal. okay all the best to you and much much Hatzlach